Hey, my name is Nick Carter, and family to me is my three kids and my lovely wife. Hello, and welcome to We Are Family. I'm your host, Julia Dennison, and I'm here with musician Nick Carter, who you will, of course, know from the Backstreet Boys. His new single, Easy, featuring country singer Jimmy Allen, is out now, and the Backstreet Boys DNA World Tour 2022 kicks off this summer. He's also just become a dad again for the third time with his wife, Lauren. Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So as everyone's going to be listening to this, your single, Easy, will, will have been out um, mm-hmm. What's it been like being in the studio again? It must feel like a home away from home. It, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I'm getting ready to start touring with the boys again very soon. Um, on June, I think, is our first show at the Hollywood Bowl out in Los Angeles. Um, so really excited about that. But uh, to kind of get things kind of going again, um, I, I was writing and recording music with my producer, Vic Martin, and um, the song Easy uh, came from that writing session. Uh, this was about three or four months ago. Um, and we had this idea of doing kind of like a pop crossover country kind of thing. We had done that before with a group called Florida Georgia Line. Uh, we had a number one hit with them called God, Your Mama, and Me. I was a really big fan of Jimmy Allen, who um, is an up, up and coming uh, country star out there who um, I love his music and asked him to do to join me um, on the record. And so he wrote a second verse on it. And we just pretty much started writing and talking about our lives as is right now, uh, raising kids, uh, being husbands, and, um, you know, entertainers all at the same time. But um, so it was it was pretty easy and a lot of fun to, to work with him. That's awesome. The raising kids part is what's interesting to us over here at Parents, because obviously this is a family podcast all about um, family. <laughs> And um, what do your kids think about your music? Do you bring them into the recording studio? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, uh, I've had two years off. Um, I can't remember when we, we stopped with the tour with the boys. Um, my daughter, Pearl, ha- was not even born yet. Uh, and my other daughter, Saoirse, uh, the, both of them are the youngest. Um, they really don't know uh, the daddy is a Backstreet Boy. Uh, my uh, son, I brought him to our Vegas residency when we had first um, moved to Vegas about five years ago, and he came to one of the shows and he saw me, but he's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, my daughter, Sirsha, actually, um, she's the one that loves to sing. And, you know, in the morning when I'm waking up preparing uh, breakfast for the kids and getting them ready for school, you know, I, I'll be watching the baby monitor. <laughs> And she'll be the one just in the crib singing to herself, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, you know, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, all of them. And she can actually carry a tune. She's, you know, two years old and I'm getting ready to go on the road and uh, I'm kind of getting this like, not necessarily fear, but anxiety because I'm like, I'm going to miss them so much. And, you know, they're in school, you know, are they going to be able to come on the road? Is she going to see, you know, who daddy is? And and, and is she going to get jealous of the, the girls and the fans watching us on stage, you know, uh, all those things. And um, I'm really excited to, to, to perform and have her be in the audience for the first time because she really loves music. She loves to sing. Her and I actually, we do like a back and forth thing sometimes, you know. Uh, I'll, and she actually, I think, can harmonize, which is oh. pretty impressive. Oh, my God. That is so cute. She is going to love it. Just I'm just, yeah. that moment when she real- sees dad on stage, I think it's probably going to be like, oh, my goodness. Um, that is so yeah. cool. So now, obviously, pop star life is not always easy um, or fame, etc. If your kids turn around and say that they want to join a boy or a girl band or, you know, they want to get into music, what would you say? I've had this uh, discussion with um, my friends and uh, my wife and, you know, it's important. Uh, school is more important than anything. Um, and, you know, I said, well, because I started at the age of like 12, uh, started basically touring the world at, you know, 13, 14, really, really young. And looking back at it, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm grateful for, you know, how it, it, it turned out, um, you know, but uh, I, we were talking about, I think you're going to go through the school choir, you're going to go through the school programs first, you know, and then once you turn 18, if you want to do what you want to do, you can, you know, those types of things. I just, you know, school is so important to me uh, for, for my children to have structure, to be able to have that foundation uh, first and foremost. So, but listen, if they want to talk about it, they want to listen to it, all those things, it's great. But I want them to be able to be kids first and, you know, 
and, and really enjoy that part of their lives. Fair enough. So now Pearl is what, 10 months old? Uh, yes. So I, I'm always in awe of my friends who have three kids. Um, they, you know, outnumber the parents. It's a, it can feel like a lot. Sad. What's that been like <laughs> now that you're, you have three kids in that family? For me, it's, it's about the delegation of time, um, that you, you have, you know, you have three different personalities, three different needs, three different human beings that, that want affection and attention. Um, and you know, how do you, cause it's like on one hand you got a, you know, a 10, a 10 month old, you know, over there crying. And then you have your daughter on the other hand, like wanting your attention, then your son, you know, all happening all at the same time. And then you got to just basically you're learning on the job. You're, you're figuring it, figuring it all out and, and experiencing. I love the challenge. I think it's great. Um, I think, but thankfully I have, you know, my wife, um, who's able to help, you know, you know, right now, Odin, he's uh five, five years old and he's all about mommy right now. Everything is mommy, mommy, mommy. I'm like, that's good. You go to your mommy. I'll take care <laughs> of the two girls. <laughs> so I'll take care Tacky. of the two girls right now. Like, you know, yeah. you know, so it, it, it's, it's a challenge. Um, and by the end of the day, I'm exhausted and I'm going to sleep and waking up early, but I, I, I absolutely love it. And, you know, the beauty is that hopefully when they get a little bit older that they'll start to entertain each other <laughs> right that's that's the dream right there right exactly um i love the names that you picked out sorsha is so you. beautiful odin i love that and pearl where did you yeah. how did you what was your process when i came up came with to uh naming them yeah so um odin <clears throat> was I, I don't know if we were watching this show vikings or not and that, if that was the inspiration or not or maybe it was a marvel movie i don't know uh but um uh, my wife wanted to, to, that was her choice of, uh, uh the name for our son. Um, it's unique. It's different. There's strength in it. I, I think that's, we, we like that. Um, and, but that was obviously something that she, she wanted, she chose. And I'm, I'm like, Hey, you're, you're the mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she wants. It's your choice. Right. Uh, but then we were on the, so we were on the road. Um, oh, we were over in, in Italy on tour with the Backstreet Boys uh, and we were in Milan and, at that time, we were watching. So I have a little bit of like Irish blood in me, and so is um, my wife as well. Um, and we love Irish culture, and um, we love all sorts of cultures. So it's not just one particular thing. We were watching this movie called uh, Song of the Sea, which is just adorable. Yes. Well, I, I like to call it was so love great, that. and it was it was o Odin was on the road with us while we were over in tour in Europe, and we were playing it for him all the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, we, unfortunately, my wife had, uh, some miscarriages and we lost a, um, so that happened prior to that. And so Saoirse turned out to be a, a rainbow baby, but mm. the lead character in the film song of the sea, her name was Saoirse. Saoirse. So, and the little boy, he was like this little blonde older brother, you know, who was dealing with like this, his younger sister. So it was kind of like, I like to say in some ways, like, like, Odin, you always knew that you had this, your sister, you knew who your sister Saoirse was because you, you saw her in the movie. And so she was a rainbow baby. And, and so we decided to name her after the lead character in the movie. Loved it. I recommend the movie to anybody. It's so great. I, I know that like movie. Lullaby. I totally recommend and love it too. The music is incredible and it was so great. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, so I was the one who got the choice of the rainbow baby with Saoirse mm -hmm. uh, to name. And then Pearl was actually something that my wife actually wanted to name one of our children. And that was an option for Saoirse uh, as a name. And so uh, Pearl sort of was a, a, another miracle situation. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I just think it's fitting just to name her her Pearl. And so it's beautiful. So baby little Pearl, baby Saoirse, and big brother Odin. That's beautiful. So you talk to me a little bit about uh, more about um, what happened. There were some complications with Pearl, and you went through those miscarriages. And, and often we we talk about, you know, what the moms go through and that's obviously pivotal and very important, but sometimes we don't talk enough about, about the dads. Yeah. So, um, how did you kind of cope through all that? What was that, that time period like for you? Number one, it's recognizing that it's not about me, you know, and that's the first thing, you know, it's, this has nothing to do with me. This is, this is something that she's going through and I have to just be there to, to support her being there in the most, um, the toughest times, um, and, uh, watching, you know, the, the, this person who you love so much go through those, 
those things um, and you really don't have any control over it you know those those are some of the toughest uh, things to go through but just to be there emotionally um, spiritually um, and to lift lift them up I mean there's a lot of stuff I'm, I'm sure a lot of people out there know how you know what that feels like but um, just to be the rock you know at the time and to just be you know try not to be opinionated try not to do anything other than just be mm-hmm. there and that is the most important part that's really wonderful um, and your Instagram is just so full of pictures of your family and your kids it's so sweet and you have a highlight on there with family with a red heart next to it um, you're clearly a very hands-on dad you know getting on the floor and playing with Lego and things like that um, what would you say your parenting style is and did you always want to be a dad you don't know if you want to be a dad until you are a dad necessarily I don't I, it's hard to explain I've always been a, a person who just wants to give and care for people, um, everyone and anybody who has ever come into my life. A lot of, a lot of my friends and, and family say, you know, you were meant to be this and, you know, sometimes it's surreal to under, you know, but, but for me, you know, knowing that, um, you have these three individuals and human beings, human beings who have a, a, a clean slate and a fresh start, um, is a responsibility that, that I, I embrace and and love knowing that you you can give them unconditional love you can you give them the opportunity to to have a peaceful and 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 healthy household Um, these are all things that that um, are in me and that I want to do so to say that did I always want to be a dad I I've always wanted to take care of people and, and take care of the ones that I love the most and now that I that I have those three little munchkins, um, uh, you know, I will never let them down. I will always be there through thick and thin. And, you know, they are, they're everything to me. That's so sweet. I love that. So we talk a lot on this podcast about chosen family, family that's not necessarily biological. Um, who would you say is in your chosen family? Would you consider the Backstreet Boys part Absolutely. of the family? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say that because uh, I met the guys when I was 12 years old. Um, you know, that's literally only six years away from my son's age right now, you know? Um, and when I met them, um, I was introduced to four other individuals who came from families, you know, different types of families, all walks of life. Um, you know, some guys were from Kentucky, some were from Orlando, some were from, you know, so I was able to really, um, learn a lot from them and that chosen family that I was with and at a very young age and um you know so I'm very grateful to to my to my guys going on 30 years of being in this in this group um and when we when we're on the road um when our buses are all in tandem you know and and together um you know we we stop and we we get off we go to a hotel or we go to a venue all of our families get off together and they're playing together you know and and they're congregating and everyone's like it's just a very big family it's a really big family and um yeah i'm very i'm very uh, grateful to have my brothers my four brothers that's wonderful so really quick just thinking about your own childhood is there any kind of anything from your own childhood that you wanted to replicate when you became a parent or is there anything that you were like i do not want to put my own kids well, through that well well i mean again like i say you know i started at such a young age um you know 12, 12 years of age, you know, mm-hmm. started to be a provider for, for my family at the time. You know, I, I was the breadwinner or in all those things. And, you know, at a very young age, I was working. Yeah, uh, it's a lot and, of pressure. You know, and it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. And without say, saying, say, saying something, without saying it, you know, it's allowing, going back to what we were talking about before, allowing my children to be kids. They, they could just be kids, enjoy their lives, grow up, go to school, um, you know, have friends, take them to karate, you know, it's like t-ball here, you know, whatever it is, you know, just let them be kids and let me be the provider for them. That's what that it's maybe a little old fashioned or whatever, but you know, I, I'm, I am, I'm the dad, I'm the provider. My wife, we, we together are there to give them, uh, to allow them to have their childhood and to not necessarily have to to work for us. 
Fair enough. Um, so the last question we ask everybody is, what are your hopes and dreams for your family for the future? I have so many hopes and dreams that um, for my my children and my family, um, the one thing, yeah, it's so silly. Yeah, I, I, I want to see them go to college. I want to see them go to college. I want to see them. I want to be able to take them to college. I want to be able to... Uh, uh, just just a normal life, you know, a normal life. Um, and if they want to, whatever they want to do as far as their profession goes, that's really up to them. But what I want, I, I just want to uh, finish, have school be a priority. Um, and the dreams is that they, I, I remember having this conversation with um, one of the staff people at, at one of the schools that I'm taking my children to. And they asked me, that, they said that question, they said, what do you want? I said, um, I want them to be better than me. And that and that's and that's that's my only dream. That's great. Nick, thank you so much for coming on We Are Family. This has been great to talk. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.